Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Around the Table. So glad that you're with us. If you're watching live on our Facebook premiere uh, at 7 o'clock on Thursdays, we're premiering live on Facebook and YouTube as well. And then you can always catch up on YouTube or a podcast or right back here on Facebook. Hey, before we get started, I just want to remind you of a couple things. Uh, number one, we would love to know your questions. We'd love to invite you around this table with us and have a conversation so if you want to get in on this action and have a question answered on the show, there's two ways you can do that. Number one, you can te text questions to 276-451-2621, or you can go to hf.church slash questions, and you can submit a question. We'd love to hear from you. I've gotten some really good questions. We're going to hit some of those today in this conversation, and I uh, would love to invite you to share that as well. So I just want to say that up front, so uh, we'll come back to those questions later, but hey, if you're watching this and you just got something, a question that's just burning through that you're like, I got to ask this, like, come on, you can ask it. We'd love to hear it. Okay, here we go. Let me introduce who's on the show this week. I'm very, very excited about all of this. Uh, first, we have Craig Barber, uh, Abingdon Campus Pastor, Simple Rhythms Extraordinaire. Hey, Craig. Craig's muted. Hey, Craig. There we go. James, it's great to be with you, you guys this evening and super excited about the conversation that we can have together. We're excited about you being here. You've been, uh, we can give a plug real quick for Simple Rhythms online as well. Sunday nights at six o'clock on the Simple Rhythms page, you can watch their premiere of their kind of Zoom call as well. So Craig's been, he's been Zooming a lot lately, haven't you? Many Zoom conversations. Yes. So I've become familiar. Uh, however, you wouldn't know it by my failure to click the mute on my <laughs> mic. <laughs> that's okay. Hey, that's the beauty of live conversations, right? <laughs> um, also, we have Tim Lemons with us. Hey, Tim. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, so for the people watching wherever they are in the world right now, Tim, why don't you share maybe just a little bit about uh, what you do at Highlands, and I know you've done a lot of things over the years, but maybe what you're currently doing. Yeah, I think I've done almost every position except for like uh, kids ministry, or not positions, but maybe <laughs> min maybe ministries, worship, tech, yeah. students. Uh, so currently I'm in communications, and uh, I do the Rock Database, which is like our church management software that we use to do really cool things with. Um, so that's most of my day is spent um, social media, and internet, websites, um, communicating, yeah, things like that. It's good stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, we love we love Rock RMS. If you're out there and watching, and you want to know about Rock, hit us up. We want to talk about it. Yeah. Tim's Tim yeah. is always up to talk about Rock. And then, yes. last but certainly not least, is Becca Ivester. Hello, Becca. Hey, how's it going? I'm excited hey. to be here. Yeah, Becca is one of our, I guess, most recent hires probably at Highlands. I think so, So yeah. maybe share a little bit about, about yourself, maybe how you've been connected with Highlands through the years. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my official title is Worship Gatherings Care Coordinator, and I my short way of explaining it is that if it involves people, it involves me. So um, if there's people involved, I will, that's what I like to do, so... Um, I started at the Bluefield, attending the Bluefield campus in September of 2015, which if that date sounds familiar, that's when it opened. So I've been connected with Highlands for, for a bit. Um, did, the, did the internship twice and finished up with the residency in December, and now I'm here. So I'm excited. You've you have done all the things uh, to to serve in capacities, haven't you? <laughs> Less than Robbie, but all uh, the things. <laughs> that's right. Robbie Gaines <laughs> was on here last week. The man who is trying to plant tomatoes in his house. Uh, <laughs> campus pastor of Bluefield. We do. We love Robbie, and uh, hey, we're glad to have Becca with us as well. Becca is. Um, a great friend she is a great help on staff and she really does help us stay connected with people which is hey we're in the people business right and uh, as always my name is James I'm our online director and messaging director and if, if Becca deals with people I deal with uh, pixels maybe <laughs> is that is that it uh, all the pixels out there I'm helping craft and 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 I don't know distribute in the right way in this time um, 
Hey, let, let's just kind of go around uh, around the horn here and talk about how you're doing in this time. Uh, this is your first time on, so I'm trying to kind of gauge everybody's vibes as we're coming in. It's been several weeks of stay-at-home orders and st- social distancing and work from home, and like uh, I'm like teaching my children from home, which I just am not a teacher, <laughs> so like I miss school and all those things. But let's start. We'll go. We'll go to Craig first. Craig, how, how have you been doing in this time? Well, we're doing good. I think, um, at least on the surface anyway, right? So, and I say that because a lot of times I think, uh, like right now it's predominantly just me and Melinda here at the house. And, uh, we have a daughter who's in grad school, uh, trying to be a PA. So she's got her own set of challenges. Um, and I think a lot of times, like we're, uh, we're we're all right. The conversation, the evenings, the days seem to be going pretty well, but it can be the slightest little thing every once in a while that is said or a look, and it can man, it can it causes things to go south kind of quickly. And I'm like, I didn't realize how close I was, maybe, or Melinda was. But you kind of, you know, you, you don't all the time see it. But I think for the most part, we're doing good. Obviously, it's it's changed uh, so much the amount of time that we're together right now, which was a big deal. And in the midst of this, we're right now trying to adopt two children from uh, Columbia, South America. And so they called us on Monday and just said, hey, um, from this point forward, the amount of interaction is going to dramatically increase So we're in the home stretch. We're excited about all those things. And that's kind of got our minds preoccupied a little bit away from everything that we're dealing with, with uh, uh, the current valley we're in. So, yeah, that's yeah. That was Columbia, South America, South America, not South Carolina, not South South Carolina, Carolina. (laughs) South America, a little farther south. Um, man, that, yeah, that's, that's incredible. Um, that journey's incredible. We'll have to, we'll have to bring, we'll have to have a conversation about that, you know, in the coming days and weeks about how that came about. It's a really cool story. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good to hear Tim. Tim, how are you doing? Doing pretty well. Um, there's, uh, I'm a people person and so definitely missing some people. Um, sitting here at the house all day working I'm like this has increased my workload it hasn't decreased by any means I hear all these people talking about like man I'm gonna learn how to do this and I'm gonna learn how to do this and I'm like well good good for you because <laughs> I am slammed <laughs> uh, so lots of stuff to keep me busy for sure um, and then uh, e- evenings are with the kids and the wife and um, feels like it's always something to do um, and then kids go to bed wife goes to bed i get on and play some xbox with some friends that's my release right now to connect with people so uh that's been fun playing some apex and some nba 2k 20 if anybody wants to hit me up and play challenge accepted there you go yeah for me and maybe you feel this too i've been so busy right doing stuff like the internet is is booming (laughs) and uh i I for i'm having trouble sometimes remembering what day it is because it's just like i'm just gonna roll through these things and then it's like yeah but tonight it doesn't really matter because we don't have anywhere to go uh (laughs) it's like we're just gonna stay home we're gonna eat dinner we're gonna like play some games play some board games with the kids or watch a movie they go to bed i play the nintendo switch i wake up and do it again it's uh it's not terrible but it's also yeah i'm with you tim like I, i like hanging out with people and going places i like working remotely i don't know that i love working only from home <laughs> so, yeah i i definitely i don't know how much weight i've gained I, I was in the habit of playing basketball like every like twice a week and um i haven't been able to do that so i definitely miss that as well so i'm not getting much physical exercise by any means yeah same 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 all right becca let's go to you how are you doing in this time well my situation's a little bit different than um, just about everyone. I don't have a roommate, and I'm not married, so I am alone a lot. I have to be alone with myself a lot, and um, yeah, it's been different. It's been really interesting. It's um, I took up yoga. It's been pretty cool. It's been pretty exciting, but yeah, that's I'm doing okay. 
I do a solid okay. I'm enjoying the time by myself because I do, I am, I am more, um, that's where I get my energy. It's from being alone, but like, I got to let go of some of it somewhere. I got to talk to someone. So I call my family a lot and it's been, it's been okay. One thing though yeah. is I am tired of my cooking. I thought I was pretty decent at cooking. I am, I know how to make three things good and I'm tired of those three things. So what are those three things? Right? Uh, my mom's meatloaf and it's not even like good. It's just, it's like my mom's is up here and mine is like here. So it's okay. Uh, cheeseburger, macaroni and spaghetti. So. Okay. I'll have any thing that's not those three things. <laughs> Let please me send know. back a, please send back a, your favorite quarantine <laughs> meals. I am not a cook by any means, but I recently made Parmesan chicken and it was the first time I've ever like breaded chicken and done that whole all that process and it was actually pretty good I was rather impressed. I couldn't believe it. I'm like nice. scared of fire. Does that involve deep frying? No. Okay, good. <laughs> well, no, not deep frying. You put it in the skillet with some oil, but Oh, that's fine. It was, yeah. If I can do it, I promise you can do it. I can't make me loaves, so you're good. <laughs> that's Tim's cooking cooking strategy. If he can do it, you can do it. Um, that's funny. Yeah, I, we've made a lot of food at home for sure. Um, we, we, we've been utilizing our crock pot a lot. So I just ate some Indian kind of like curry or like butter chicken. It was really good. Then my wife made the crock pot. So there you go. Um, yeah, you know, I think thinking about all of our answers and just where I think all of us are at, there's this sense of settling into something that feels kind of normal, but it doesn't feel normal at the same time. We've been doing this for a little while, and it's kind of unknown, right? Like what, what, what the future holds, and that can be hard, especially if you're somebody who likes to plan, who likes to prepare and take next steps, and like have those things in front of you. This has been a trying season, where you kind of have to take it a day at a time. You got to take it just a little bit at a time, and I think that 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 kind of leads well into kind of going through Pastor Allen's message. We're walking through this series called Faith in the Fire and uh, a, a very aptly named and time series walking through the book of James. And really this main verse from last week, James 1, 2, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And that's one of those verses that, um, you know, there's some verses in the Bible that you read and you're like, yes, this is good for me right now. And then there are verses like this when you're like, this is good for me in the future, right? This is good for me one day. And, uh, it, you know, let, let's just kind of, whoever wants to answer can go, can go first. What's something that maybe stood out from this message or something as you're reading through the book of James that's really hitting you? Um, for me, I mean, just that idea of considering it joy when I face trials is uh, that's a perspective shift that is not normal, right? Normally when trials come and difficulty comes, you're like, I don't like this. I'm going to complain about it or whatever. So, you know, that thought for me of how do I see God in the middle of these things? How do I trust him uh, knowing that it's going to develop perseverance and faith ultimately, but I don't, there's like a delayed gratification. And so that's been my thought and struggle. What do you guys, what do you guys think? What stood out in this message? I'm going to talk before Craig because we just had a simple conversation, a simple rhythms conversation around this topic. And so uh, I'm going to talk before him so he doesn't take all the good stuff. Um, but uh, so in that, J James um, really was used at a pivotal time in my life. I was going through a divorce like 10 years ago, and it was a very difficult time. It wasn't something I wanted to go through. I didn't want the divorce. Um, but man jane uh this book really changed my whole perspective of the whole thing um and so i was reading i can remember sitting at the kitchen table like so clearly and it was like jesus was sitting there with me and it was like one of those moments of man uh okay and i, w I was reading it in the message translation so I'm, I'm gonna read it to you real quick just in the message because i love the way it puts it it says, uh, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. So, like, you know, it's our 
our culture and our human nature to if we're in trouble or we're going through a tough time we want to get out of it and we want to um like whatever we got to do to get through this process and like let's get out of this right now but that to me is saying you know like you gotta be in this during this season and go through this and to experience what I need you to experience to become who you need to become you know like I wouldn't have I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't gone through that tough time and experienced that trial so I can consider it pure, pure joy that I went through that because it it made me a better person and it brought me so much closer to Jesus that I would have ever been yeah that's good and and that's that's that perspective I think that's so hard right is it's not uh, James is not saying, hey, enjoy the ride, right? Enjoy every moment of this beautiful trial. It's just that you know that there's a purpose in that pain. There's a purpose in the process. And and yeah, we, we don't like to wait for those things. Like we want high speed internet, instant access. Like I tried to order some stuff on Amazon recently and it was like going to take a month to get here. And I'm just like, what? I need my fit, you know? <laughs> and it's like, it, I can wait for that that's really not a problem, you know, but we're used to just getting instant access. And this is a good reminder that, yeah, it's not so fast, right? It's not so, uh, faith and perseverance come through time and patience and difficulty. And there's really no easy button to press for that. Craig, what about you? What's sticking out? Hey, I really, uh, when I heard Tim share that uh, last week, um, I was just, you know, I was really encouraged by it because I thought about how many times I've wanted out prematurely. I mean, who who, who wants to stay in it? Like I, I want out of it and then just being reminded. I love the way that the message says it too. You know, if you, you want out of it prematurely, you're, you're not going to reach maturity. And so, um, you know, that was a big, uh, I think that was a big uh, truth that, you know, God was trying to press into my life. And I, and I have to try to sit on that often. I guess something that I wondered when I was uh, kind of processing through the message, I listened to it a couple of times. And um, I know that as Pastor Allen was working through it, uh, he he's sharing these problems that I think we experience uh, like, and we, we can't like, (laughs) we can't connect the dots as to why we're experiencing these particular problems. And I know that these guys were going through, uh, the, the folks that James is writing to, they're going through severe persecution. It's during a time when really the church scatters. And even through that, there is incredible good that happens. And he mentions Romans 8, 28, uh, I really think it's through the dispersion of the church that the gospel reaches around the world, because if not, they would have just hung out in Jerusalem. Um, but it made me stop because there are times, though, that I have problems in my life that, and I think uh, Pastor Allen mentioned, some of them I create, right? And uh, the flow of this particular passage, uh, I think, lends itself to those problems we didn't create. But what about the ones I, I think sometimes that we do? Uh, yeah, because I, I, I like, I think everybody else, you know, we've made some choices that have been selfish at times and, uh, and, and some choices that were just down, they were just bad choices. And so it made me stop and think, I think when I experience problems in my life, I just wrote down, man, I, I do want to examine them. Like what's, what is the core problem here and reflect on how did this thing trans, transpire? And if it is sin in my own life, like I do think that there is a, cause nobody wants to talk about those kind of problems. <laughs> like <laughs> I'll talk to you about the problems in my life that I didn't cause, but Sometimes I think we have problems that we did. And I think in those moments, I do think that the scripture is pretty clear about, hey, you need to confess that and repent of it, meaning change direction from it. Don't don't um, try to, I think, um, justify the decision, which is oftentimes what I can see myself doing. Oh, yeah, here's why I did what I did. Uh, but bottom line, you know, if it was a bad decision, if it was a sin in my life, I do think that I'm called to confess it, repent of it, and, and, 
and then begin to move forward. But I love what um, is brought out in this passage because I think these guys are doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing. They were where God wanted them. They were doing what God wanted them to do. And in those moments, as Tim said, I think the call is to endure. Uh, that was probably the one word that I held on to more than any other from uh, at this time in my life and going through this passage is endurance to remain under, hey, don't rush the process. There's some things that are only going to be discovered in your life in this valley. They're not going to be discovered on a mountaintop. They're not going to be discovered hanging out over at the stream. But right here in this valley, there's some things I think that God can and will reveal to us about who we are, about who he is. But you're going to have to endure that. You're going to have to endure the season. And I think that that to me is a really tough pill to swallow at times. Yeah, it's it, that endurance too, right? Is it, especially that makes me think about this season that we're in, which is a little bit of that unknown length, right? It's like if you got to run a mile, it's like I don't know how long that is, um, or you know, run a five k or whatever. But it's like, hey, can you kind of just run for an indefinite length of time? <laughs> and it's like, I'll tell you when it's over. And it's like, um, yeah, it's uh. It can be difficult for sure. And, and these, these, you know, James is such a reminder, right, that it's not wasted. And for me, like, I love productivity. Tim and I talk about this a lot. We're always like talk, doing shortcuts on things and like hacking our time. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes, though, maybe we get too fast and, and don't persevere long enough. And that that reward, that thing is just on the other side of where we're at and maybe we give up give up too early so uh yeah let, let's let's persevere let's continue even in even in that time when you don't want to uh taking that next step in, in faith and trusting in god and being honest about where you're at too right persevering is not about pretending um persevering is about is about trust it's about continuing it's about faith so um in all this i don't want you to hear us saying like hey it's just easy right there's no problem it no perseverance is is can be, still be difficult and we can be honest about that that's good uh hey becca what do, what about you what's sticking out for you yeah um so i'm going back and i pulled it i pulled it out and pulled out my bible to read through it again when tim read through it and um Something that really stuck out to me in this was where it says in um, verse four to let patience have its full effect. And I think sometimes we want to rush the process and I know we're talking about rushing the process and all of that, but um, we've got to let it have its full, we're not going to get the full effect of patience if we try and get through it before it's supposed to be over. So I talk about a time in my life, I, if you know me, you've probably heard the story about how I waited six months for a visa to to go um to go somewhere on a mission trip and to live there for six months and it was a hard and long process and i'm um some of the problems that were in that time period were definitely caused by by choices that i made but um ultimately that waiting period was because of things that god had planned in the works for afterward so it, my my idea was to go from january to june and instead i was there june to december and so much happened in that six months while I was while I was overseas that it was just it was an incredible experience and I know that God had worked those out beforehand, um, but it really but the but the six months before that was probably one of the hardest seasons of my life, and um, and I wanted to get through it so quickly as soon as I got I got my visa four months in and I was like okay let's go but then we still had to wait another two months and um, and I know that the patience produced in that process was what was what helped bear the fruit while I was there. Um, that that God really God really showed Himself to me, and hopefully to the people around me while I was while I was there. Um, yeah, and something else that's sticking out to me in this time period itself is the promises of God. Um, I love I love thinking about the promises of God. He he doesn't make a promise he doesn't keep. So um, and we know in Philippians one six that he says he's um, he who started a work in us is going to bring it to completion. We've got to let that have its full effect. And Romans eight twenty eight, we all know that it, we know that in all things, God works together for our good. So really clinging to those promises in the times of waiting and the tough times and the trials, that's something that I really want to, 
to say and to hold on to myself because sometimes I'm like, oh my goodness, God, I really miss church. I really want to be with my people again. I really want to be around people again. But I know that in this time, he is working something for our good. Yeah, that's great. I love that idea that he, you know, uh, the verse in Romans, right, that God works all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Doesn't mean that everything is good. It's just that he's good and he's capable. Um, yeah, I just, man, I think all of us are in that season of waiting. Like when you're talking about waiting for that visa and like waiting for those things, it's like, yeah, we're all kind of waiting for something right now. Um, I, I liked what Alan, Pastor Allen said about this. Um, he said, you know, we don't rejoice for the problem. We rejoice in the problem. First Thessalonians 5.18, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. So, you know, we don't have to be thankful for everything. We just get to be rejoicing in those things because we're in God and we can trust him. Um, and I don't know about you, but my level of trust has had to increase in trusting God, trust in his, you know, in, in his will and his plan. I've realized in this season how much, I, how much weight I put on myself, right? Like how much weight I'm taking on of, oh, I can control this. I can do this. I'm going to go do this. And and now it's like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> and you can't do that either. And well, when are you going to be able to do that? I don't know. And so much of my identity, you know, maybe even being tied up on things like being in weekend gatherings, playing on our worship team, uh, you know, whether it's speaking or whatever thing that you're doing, like maybe that thing has been taken away from you. And so how do you how do you deal with that? How do you work through that? And how, how can we land in that place of rejoicing in those problems and in those difficulties um, to, to, to lean into that trust? It can be hard. Um, that's good stuff. Anybody else, any, any thoughts on James or um, things we've been talking about? I was just thinking, too, like, I know if you're new to faith um, or maybe you're exploring faith right now, maybe you stumbled on this and you're not, you don't know what you believe about Jesus I like that Alan talked about that. <clears throat> well, I mean, the, I think at the title or at the top, it's a, yeah, the title is everybody has problems, right? Um, whether you're a Christian, whether you're not a Christian, you're going to have problems. Sometimes because you gave your life to Jesus, you're going to have more problems. <laughs> like, um, it, it's not like a call to an easy life, right? Like, um, following Jesus is difficult. Like, I, I mean, I made that decision as a teenager to really take it to a, like a different level and really be serious about following Jesus. And I, I had to stop hanging out with friends. Like I try, I tried to keep hanging out with his friends, but I just kept getting dragged down. And I just, you know, I had to make a lot of tough, dif difficult decisions because I decided to follow Jesus. Um, so I, th I think if you, if you're new to the faith or you're exploring faith and you've heard maybe Christians or somebody say like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, so life is great and everything's joyful and everything's perfect and all that. Like, I would just encourage you to to think that it's not always <laughs> perfect and everybody has problems. Like the the whole title of this message and whether you're following Jesus or not, um, you're gonna have situations. But I think the great thing about having faith during this time is when other when other people leave you even people you think would never leave you or abandon you or betray you or cause you hurt or cause you pain like Jesus is never going to do that he's the only thing that can be 100% faithful 100% right um in your life to get you through those things yeah that's good i like that becca craig anything else before we jump into some some q and a yeah i really just um want to want to tag on that we're all going to go through something we all have our own we don't know what's underneath the surface of of everyone else and um again like tim yeah i just want to reiterate what tim said because that is so important we will see you can see believers out in the world who are just who are choosing joy and you don't get to see what's underneath of the choice of rejoicing um, everybody has something that's going on. So yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Tim, because that really is, that is so important. Yeah, that was good. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I think just one quick thought, um, and it went, it, it does kind of tag in, because I was thinking about this too from the perspective of, an, you know, somebody who's still kind of exploring faith. 
like when he gives us four facts of life that problems are inevitable. I think a lot of times when I, you know, I, I've had conversations with people who are still exploring their faith, they, they would ask why, <laughs> like what, why are there problems? And, and I think uh, he's given a great description based on the passage that they're inevitable and predictable, varied and personal, that, that there's all those things. But like, I think the, the person who's still trying to figure out their faith, they're wondering why is life filled with problems? And if there is a God who's there, then why doesn't he remove the problem? And, um, yeah, that was a question that I reflected on a little bit before we had this conversation. And I think a lot of it depends on your perspective, too, because if, if your perspective is like this is all that you're going to ever experience in your existence, then this is you – know, problems are very troubling. Um, I think for us, and I'm, when I say us, those who have you know, looked at the Scripture and come to belief in Jesus – then, you know, for me, I, I, I think the existence of why there are problems goes all the way back to and there's sin in the world. I mean, it's a simple answer, right? Like there's, but sin create, before sin enters the picture of the story that God shares with us, there's no problem. Um, but the moment that it does from that day forward, it's filled with problems. And um, I, I think if, if I'm here in this earth and I think this is my only length of existence, then this is kind of the, I'm troubled by the existence of those problems. But if you see that, you know, there, there is the possibility as Tim mentioned that, that we would find our faith in Christ who walks with us, provides a solution to this problem that has plagued all of humanity. Um, then we begin to realize there is a way to, you know, my hope is not, not just for my existence here in this time frame, but that there is, and I think James mentions it, you know, that as you read on in the passage, that our hope really is beyond this lifetime. Uh, it's a hope that lives in us right now, but uh, I just, I guess I just was exploring you know, from a different perspective, I think I have a lot of conversation with people that just wonder why in the world, if there is a God, do we have all these problems? And, uh, yeah, I do think there is, there's a fairly short answer <laughs> and I don't want to, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't want to shortchange the discussion, but I think that's basically where it is. And, you know, I do think that Jesus came to resolve that problem so that we could spend not just this time frame, but eternity with them. Yeah, that's good. And uh, if you want to hear a little bit more about that, if you go back to, uh, I think it was the first episode around the table with Steve and Blake, we talked about that idea of, you know, where's God in bad stuff? Yeah. And did God, did God bring, did God make this virus? Did he, you know, how do, how do we think about that? And Steve did a great job answering that and, and you did too as well. So if you want to hear a longer, longer answer, go check out that earlier video. Hey, let's, let's change gears a little bit and get into some Q and A before we, before we jump off here again, if you want to send a question, you can text questions, the word questions to 276-451-2621, or you can just go to hf.church slash questions to get your question on the show. Uh, the first question was from somebody who watched last week, which is awesome. They said, hey, uh, they asked a question uh, tonight, which they were watching this live last week, about whether or not we can lose our salvation. Seemed like the short answer was no. But then they brought up this this passage in Revelation 3, 15, and 16, which is, uh, it says basically, I know your works, they're not hot or cold, talking about uh, the church there, they're not hot or cold, and then it says, I would spit you out, you're lukewarm, um, and I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. So their question is, what, is, what does this mean? What does the spitting out of his mouth refer to? Is it, lose, is it, is it that idea of losing our salvation or something else? Um, thanks. Enjoy listening. So great question. Great follow up to last week's question. Um, any of you guys feel free to jump in. You know, what, what do you what comes to mind when you think about that? Lukewarm. You know, Revelation says that I'd rather you be hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. No pressure, right? <laughs> well, I think. Uh... 
so that was like I think it was the Church of Laodicea, and there's like um, they have the um, the water. Um, they 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 had like a really. I'm going to butcher this. They had a really awesome uh, water system, right? Where they actually had hot water and it was delivered. And by the time it got to like one place, it was kind of like lukewarm. And so I, th I think like the, he's just using that as an example of, you know, like you have hot water, which is great and useful and it does a lot of great things. And then you have cold water and that's awesome and great. But when it's, when it's just warm or lukewarm, it's like, yeah, I'm not just going to spit you out of my mouth. Like, and, yeah. I, and, and I think the danger of, taking one verse and trying to apply the, you know, you know, anything to it is you have to do it through the whole lens of the whole Bible. So to, to me, he's not talking about, you know, I'm going to, you're not going to get into heaven or you're, you're going to, you're, I'm spitting you out of, your, out of my mouth. So we have no relationship anymore and you're not coming to heaven or whatever. Um, to me, it's just an example of, you know, I, I'd really, I'd rather you be like on fire for me or nothing at all, or even cold. Cause you know, at least then you have some purpose, <laughs> but, um, so, but when we take the whole Bible as a as a whole, it to me it's clear that salvation is nothing that we earn ourselves, and so if we can't earn it, we can't lose it either. Yeah, that's good. Craig, Becca, any any kind of thoughts to go along with that? I think um, you know, as I, I remembered the illustration that Tim was talking about, I think the water came, the hot water came from Heropolis, the cold water came from Colossae. And by the time it traveled into Laodicea, it was neither one of those, right? Um, but when I, I, when I took a look at this passage, I, and I looked at the question, like the person was asking, when he spits these people out of their mouth, is he, is he saying, hey, you, you were saved, but now you're not saved because I, am, I, am, I have such a distaste for the life that you're living. And then... Um, I think in order to answer that question, you got to read on. And if you look at verses 17 all the way down to the bottom, um, I think there's a lot of contextual clue as to who he may be actually referring to. Um, but he says, so he's now he starts describing them in verse 17. This is what you have to say about yourself. You say that I am rich, I'm prospered, I need nothing not realizing, now this is how he sees them, you're wretched, you're pitiable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. So there is a, there is a vast difference in the way that they see themselves and the way that Jesus sees them. And I think that this is really important because uh, I think one of the most frightening passages for me to read in all the scriptures in Matthew chapter 7 when he says, he starts talking about a group of people who will stand before him on judgment day. And they are going to say, man, I did all these things. Uh, they were really cool things, really great things. And I was doing them um, um, like for you, I was doing them for, and then he looks and says, yeah, but I never knew you depart from me. Like I didn't know who I didn't know you at all. You didn't know me and I didn't know you. And I, I mean, that gripped that, it still at times when I sit on that verse, it grips me. So I'm looking at this and here's a group of people who I think uh, they see themselves in one, in one view. And yet Jesus sees them in a radically different view. And then if you read on, he gives them some recommendations. Verse 18 says, so here's what I'm going to tell you to do. I would counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich so that you're in white garments uh, so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see guys uh, to be honest with you I, I don't know that this passage is talking about about a group of believers or if it is a group of people who think that they were believers, but Jesus sees them and says the hypocrisy of you seeing yourself one way, and yet I know the truth about you, because I can't see that, I mean, all those recommendations are things for them to be, um, are things like they're poor, they're blind, uh, and they're, they're without clothing. All those things are not true about a Christian. A Christian was blind, but now he sees. 
he was naked, but now he's been clothed in righteousness. Um, he was poor, but now he's rich because he has been purchased by the blood of Christ. And he is now a part of a royal priesthood. So for Jesus to say these things about them tells me that everything that I understand about a believer is unknown in their lives. So I don't think that they were believers that he's saying, I'm now going to cast you out as an unbeliever. I don't know that, the, in all honesty, I don't know that they were ever believers at all. Um, so that complete, and I, here's the other thing that gripped me. <laughs> if you read on in verse 20, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them. So he's tell that is an invitation. <laughs> I've heard that verse used at a ton of closings for services. Uh, what is he saying? I haven't come into you yet. I will, but I haven't yet. And uh, I, I, want, I want to, like there's a love described in this passage for these folks. Um, and yet there is a, there's a huge discrepancy b between the way that they see themselves and the way that he sees them. And uh, I think it's easy just to look and to assume these guys were believers. They lived a poor, hypocritical life and a lukewarm life. And so Jesus looks and says, I'm spewing you out. Um, you're no longer in the family. But I'm not certain that that is at all the way. And when you read the full context of it, that that's the way you can receive that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great. Hey, thank you guys for, for sharing in that. I think that's some helpful observations and thoughts about, you know, generally just about how we approach the Bible, right? Which is that context is important and uh, reading that is, and sometimes, yeah, like the Bible uses imagery like lukewarm water and it's like to those people, they would clearly understand, oh yeah, because we get the water from here and it's warm and like there's a cultural understanding there as well. So good stuff. Hey, let's keep going. Um, this is a, a much lighter question. Um, is Highlands broadcasting on Channel 10 television? Uh, I can give the short answer of that. If you have Channel 10 and that's our local Fox station, yes. Yes, we are. 11 o'clock on Sundays, definitely for the next couple months. So if, you, if you'd like to watch on television or invite your, your grandparents to watch on TV or whoever, I don't know. I don't have cable. But they tell me that it's on Fox. <laughs> so. Just a quick note about that, too, is um, if you go there, the guide is, is wrong sometimes. Like, the, I know the past two weeks, it's been wrong. One day it was like an Angelina Jolie movie, and the, another day it was <laughs> uh, something else. So uh, it's because the, the cable companies have had so much change in their... Um, programming because there's no sports there's no other all this other stuff so they couldn't get the programming updated to to show the right thing on your guide so sure. yes it will be live at 11 o'clock on sunday morning but it may say it's something else so watch is there it. <laughs> any greater shock than expecting angelina jolie and getting alan jesse right yep that's a difference for sure that's a difference maker oh, that, that i is... mean i know it's the, the initials are the same yeah the <laughs> works but the the rest of it just takes you in a completely different direction man that's true <laughs> well hey if you're watching on on local fox your local fox station we'd love to know about that it's a great opportunity we're glad we could uh, fill some of that time yeah because they had they had room so here we are hey last question this one actually is a little bit more serious and let's let's uh, maybe start with becca on this so this person's asking about social distancing um they say hey i understand social distancing hand washing not touching your face you know masks all that kind of stuff um and here's their question at what point do we do we quit trusting god and and realize that he's in control are we conforming to this world um by doing all this and are we just gonna have to wear hazmat suits everywhere we go little levity there at the end but you know i guess the heart of this question is hey you know are we are we trusting god are we not trusting god what you know what what am i supposed to do right in this time of unknown um becca you have any have any thoughts about that i i Actually, so um, I've got a pretty unique perspective again on this because um, my PhD student in an immunology lab. So she's been she's been giving me all sorts of 
cool in about um, what we can do to protect ourselves and how we can. And she's also a believer, so this is a really this is a really good. Um, she's she's firm believer in Jesus Christ. She um, she has a lot of faith that that this is going to that this is going to be okay. But um, she kind of used the example of like it is when you go out and you wear a face mask. It is not to protect yourself. It is to protect the people around you. Um, it really keeps your germs in. It keeps your germs um, enclosed, and that's it's more for them for your, than your own protection. And um, but you know, I my thought process in this as a as a simple music brained, not signed um, person is, you know, we get in a car and we wear a seatbelt, and this whole thing is brand new for us, and. We we don't know what it's we don't know what's going on, but I think that you know we can't we, you know you don't run around without a seatbelt and driving 85 miles an hour. Well, I don't know some of y'all might drive 85 miles an hour on the interstate, but you don't run around you know driving way because you have faith over right. And this is and I know that it's not exactly the same situation. This is something brand new. This is our health, but from what I understand about this virus is that it is new to our bodies. Our bodies don't know how quite how to fight it. So what we do is we are taking precautions to make sure that other people are safe. And so I don't know if that exactly answers the question. And I know that's really toe in the line of like, there's not a yes or no, I don't think. But I will I will say this. My, my sister has suggested wearing a face mask and I really trust her. And I really trust her knowledge in this. And um, and ultimately, I don't want to be the reason that someone else gets sick. So for other people's safety, you know, that's what I'll do. I'll stay home and I'll um, practice social distancing because it is it is something that we need to do for each other's safety. It's out of love. It really is. Yeah. In some ways, I think about the story of Cain and Abel when he asked God, he says, am I, am I my brother's keeper? You know, am I responsible for him? And I think we ask that a lot of, of ourselves. Oh, am I responsible for them? And it's like, yeah, you know, not for everything, but for what we can do, right? Um, you know, James talks about this, right? The good that we ought to do. And so, yeah, I think there, there's a way that you can do this, that you can live in fear, right? And, you know, I'm never going to see anyone or engage, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to let fear win. But I think being cautious, uh, taking care of yourself and other people, you can do that and trust God, right? It's not like virus versus God. It could be a lot more like, you know, living, living, you know, with, you know, parameters around these things that we have doing the best you can versus, you know, just kind of living in a flippant sort of, hey, laissez-faire, like whatever happens will happen way. Like there are some things we can do, right? There's a lot that we can't do. And that's, I think that's hard too, right? Uh, you know, you can't, we can't just like study hard for this test and make an A. <laughs> this is a thing that's novel and weird and it's a struggle and there's not a lot that we can do. So when there is something we could do to make it better, that, yeah, I'm with you, Becca. Let's, let's do what we can when we can do something. Tim, Craig, any thoughts? I love Becca that you said, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a matter of love, right? Like we're as, as a Christian, we're supposed to put others above ourselves, right? Like, and, and, and to care for others. And, and this life is not about me. It's not my story. It's not anything I'm supposed to be living for others. And to me, like, I'm not worried a bit about catching COVID. Like I, I'm not, I'm not fearful. I'm not like, in, there's no emotions there of like, oh man, what's going to, what's going to happen. But to me, it's just a simple, like, I'm going to stay inside because I don't want to get it and give it to somebody else. I don't want to go out and spread it if I had it. And, uh, it's just about thinking about others above yourself. And, um, again, like I, I, I thought of, um, like Paul talking about eating meat, right. That was sacrificed as idols. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, but if it's going to cause somebody to stumble or if it's going to cause pain or something to somebody else, then we shouldn't do it. And so uh, it's kind of the same thing. Again, is we're not supposed to think about ourselves and everything, but think about others. And so this is a way just to protect and love others. That's good. Greg? Well, I had one quick verse that uh, is in sec that I thought about. Second Timothy 1 7 says that God didn't give us a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. So love was the key there too. And what Becca and Tim were talking about, 
And I think that I, I see that last piece. He, he has given us a sound mind. Like he's, so the person who looks at me and says, dude, do you, I mean, why are you wearing a mask? Do you not have faith in God? Yeah, I do. And he gave me a mind that told me I ought to be wearing this mask. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't think one excludes the other. Uh, and I think just like Becca had, you know, a sister who's in the medical field, I'm married to one who's in the medical field. And, you know, she, I, I don't have that expertise, but I'm going to, you know, lend my ear and my mind to those who can tell me, you know, what's the best practice right now. Now, after that, I've got to use a sound mind in accordance with my faith. And so, you know, wearing the mask or not wearing the mask, I think is, is not an indicator of where you are on the faith meter with God. <laughs> so, but I do think we, we, we use what he has given us and make an intelligent decision. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You know, there there are things that, you know, the Bible doesn't talk about, right? It doesn't talk about should we wear a face mask or protective gear because that's not a thing that really existed. Um, but it does talk about, you know, learning from others, right? That there's there's a verse of Proverbs like you can learn from others' bloodshed or shed blood yourself, right? And this is one of those like, man, I'm going to defer to people who are smarter than me, uh, doctors, you know, like people that work in labs. If they tell me to do that, I'm probably going to do it. That doesn't mean I don't trust God, um, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to be dumb either, you know, <laughs> for, for my health and for other people's because we are in this together, right? We do believe that we're better together and that life should be done together. And so we are looking out for one another. Um, and I think this is an opportunity to love your neighbor, right? Uh, even if it's from a distance, we can do that. Hey, thank you guys so much for being here. This is a great conversation. Uh, man, time just flies by when we're having this. Um, but Becca, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, so glad. thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, Tim, thank you so much as well. Thank you for the opportunity. Yep, good to see everybody. And Craig, the king of simple rhythms, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I'm going to go check in with some music at this point. No, thank you, guys. It's been a good time. Thanks for all the input and conversation. Yeah. Hey, we'll see you next time for another conversation. Again, these premiere Thursdays, 7 p.m. on our Facebook page. You can watch those. And again, after Thursday, YouTube, Facebook, our podcast, wherever you get that info, it'll be there. And uh, until next time, have a great week. Stay safe. Uh, stay safe if you go outside, especially. And uh, have a great week. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.